Today we'll make this adorable thrift flip. Keep watching. So somehow or another my footage got kind of messed around here, but bear with me. We're going to take this foam board and cut it to fit this 5 by 7 frame. This is a little bit of a shadow box frame. Back was broke on it. I got it from Goodwill, but I knew that the finish on it would be perfect for spring or summer usage. So I'm just going to measure that on the foam board, and you see me lining up my ruler here, and then you can use your scissors um, or you can use a knife, whatever you want to use to cut this down so that it will fit very snugly in the back because we don't want it to press all the way through. Okay, so there's the frame I was telling you about. I love this frame. I have no idea where it originally came from, but for me it came from Goodwill, as well as that cream colored burlap, this flower pick, this pick, this ribbon. In fact, the only thing that I use that didn't come from Goodwill would be the foam backing and this little sign that I got on clearance at Hobby Lobby last year. So I'm going to cover my piece of foam in this burlap. I'm going to trim it off so I have about an inch extra for the for the uh, the thickness of this foam board. I need to be able to fold this over so and glue it down. Be sure if there's a part that you're using that has the tag on it that the tag is on the back side and not against the burlap because you will see that through the burlap. So I'm just going to pull a little bit over and press it down into that glue. You can use clamps or clips, whatever you have. I like to use my Crafter Square little pink and metal clamps there. They work good for these thinner surfaces. And they don't clamp down so hard that they make an indention, so that's really convenient when you're doing a crafting project. Just going to roll that over and press it down. Protect your fingers. Sometimes I have my fingers that, did you see that? That's craziness. I have the protector on my pointer finger on the left hand and I'm using my other fingers to press it down. Not my smartest move. Okay, so I'm just trimming off that line because it would drive me crazy not to. And I'm going to kind of turn that corner in and then press it up. That way there's no bulk hanging out on the side. Just kind of turn the corner in, press it down. You can trim off any of these little, little fibers that are bound to come out with burlap. It's just the nature of it. Lots of strings, so it is stringy. Okay, folding that one in too, pressing it down, and then holding it. You don't have to use the clamps. Um, if it looks like it's gonna stay for you, that's fine, but the fabric is, is a little on the thicker side. So I've found in my experience that it needs a little more help to stay where it needs to until the glue has a chance to grab it. Now you see this, this is not dirty. This is part of the burlap. It's just a darker fiber that's in there. And I'm trying to scratch it out. I'm trying to get it out. I did not pay attention when I cut it, so. Yeah, but that's okay, because we're going to cover it up. So I'm going to take my hot glue, put a good amount on the back of this plaque, and then place it down. I bought three of these last year. I think they were 70, 80, or 90 percent off, but I knew I'd want to use them again. And it just so happens that the details on the bunny match the colors in the frame perfectly. So, you can see here that this sits on the top of the outside. I don't want to have it completely down in there so that it is pressed against the front of the frame. So, I'm just going to support the back with some strips of, uh, I think this was poster paper. Yeah, some scraps of poster paper that I had and some hot glue just to hold it where it is. Keep it from slipping all the way down. Don't worry about how it looks right now because that will be covered. Here's some felt sheet, some felt backing sheets that I have that a neighbor gave me. She was clearing out her crafting supplies, so she gave me quite a bit of stuff. 
and I am just going to cut that down because that's going to cover up the back and give us a little more of a finished look. This is a pretty thick felt too. This is um, almost as thick as the foam board, so it's really nice. Before we do that, I'm going to sandwich in my little hanger. And this is what I do with the piece of jute. Just make a simple little tie in there. And then I'm going to slip it through the original hanger that's on the back. And this should give it all the strength that it needs to stay. I'm going to go in with some blue here and just really get kind of thick with the application. And then press this down on the back. Grab some clamps to hold it down. And then once it is set up, you can remove your clamps. And this is what we have so far. Now, because the hanger originally had a wire in the top, there are holes there. These are not holes that I was interested in spackling or um, using wood filler or anything because I knew that I would be able to trim it out and give it more of a shabby chic look if I added a little bit of that antique decorative ribbon. You can get decorative ribbon at any craft store. But there's something about these old ribbons that I just, I love. I'm gonna trim that off a little bit, just using uh, manicure scissors. I don't have detailing scissors, but these work perfectly for me. And now we're gonna work on a pretty little bow to go on the top. This is a little bit out of focus, but it's actually a, like a peach peachy color. It's really a nice little ribbon and it's pretty thick with the two layers with the ribbon in the back and then the lace on the top. It's pretty thick so it kind of holds its own there. Now all I'm doing is making six loops on each side to make the bow part, the top part of the bow. I'm going to use a little piece of jute scrap here. Little tip if you save those little pieces of burlap that come out when you're doing your projects, those little strips that always come out, you can use those again for things like this, just little scraps to tie things off if you have a good strong piece of burlap. Sometimes they'll break if you, you know, you bear down on them too hard. So just be sure that you've got a good piece, test it out before you tie it, just kind of pull on it and see if it's going to work for you. Put two or three knots in there because we're going to be pulling on this bow and you want to be sure that that knot does not come out or you'll have to start all over. I made this a small bow and just a simple bow because I like the simplicity and I want the main focus really to be on that gorgeous little bunny in the in the center. I'm going to cover up the center with just a little piece of that same ribbon. Don't leave your little tails poking out. You want to get that nice and clean looking. Protect your fingers. It is a pretty thick ribbon though, so you will see me use my the wrong unprotected fingers on here. It's almost like putting on those finger protectors. It's like putting a band-aid on, so then you kind of you favor that finger and you don't want to use it because you feel like you got a bobo on it. Well, that's kind of what I think my left hand is thinking. Okay, it has a mind of its own. So now we need some tails for that pretty ribbon, for the pretty bow, and I'm just going to cut four little strips and cut them at a slant rather than cutting them dovetails or flat or whatever, just because I thought I wanted to try something different. So this is the pattern that I like, and we're going to try this and just see, and you just give me your opinion. What do you think? Do you think that once this bow is together that this is a good look or no? Should they have a should the tails have a little more freedom or what do you think? I'm always trying to do something a little bit different. I don't want everything that I make to look exactly the same. And I want to challenge you to be creative and try your own things. What do you think? Remember there's really no right or wrong to crafting. It's it's your own creativity. It's what you love, what brings you joy. I say it all the time, joy, joy, joy. It's all about that. It's about happiness and doing what makes you happy. So this is what we have so far. And I think it looks good. 
Now I'm just tripping down some of the remnants here from that little bouquet of roses that I had. It had been used by another crafter apparently and lots of little buds and flowers were missing from it. So I just picked it apart and I'm just using, you know, what there is left. Picking the parts that will actually fit and not obscure the view from the little bunny because I don't want that to happen. I don't, I don't want the flowers to become, you know, the attention grabber here. I take some of the little rosebuds and place them around. I always want to leave in sort of my thought process instead of giving you a completely edited start to finish quickly hammer it out kind of video because I want you to see how I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about when I'm crafting, what brings me inspiration and, and what looks good to me and how you can move things around before you glue it. You know, move it around, see where you might like it first, what it looks like to you, and then, you know, for me, I want to give you inspiration and you decide what looks best for you. And then you take that idea and do your own thing. You know, that's my channel is making it my own because I want you to make things your own. Not cookie cutter of what somebody else does, you know? So when you have a foliage pick, be sure that you realize that they're plastic pieces or fabric pieces and you can trim those down. If you need something to lay flat, just trim off one side that's going to be against the flat surface, kind of like I did on the bottom there, and just press it in and see it fits nicely now. And you'll never know because you can't see the back of it. I'm going to add a little greenery to this side too. And then again, I'm thinking, where do I want to put this other piece? And I'm going to add it, just that piece, right to the top of that bow. So what do you think? I love it. I think it turned out really, really nice. I think it's a very high-end look. And that you would definitely pay a lot of money for an item like this. It's dimensional and it's the perfect colors for spring. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.